Hey, Mike Callen here, coming a little bit late uh, with a Facebook Live this evening. Wanted to come at with you and show you how to create ninja level estimate on site forms for service autopilot. So, one of the things we teach in our deep dives where people come up to New York for two days and hang out with us and we recreate their whole entire estimate and workflow system uh, based on a production rate based estimating system is we go out and build on site estimate forms. So, these estimate forms track all the variables um, that you're grabbing when you're on site. So whether they're the projected hours to per, per basically perform a job, whether the small, medium, and large shrubs, number of hedgerows, uh, any of the variables that we're tracking on site, uh, this on site estimate form tracks it through your mobile phone or through like a Chromebook. But basically the process would be if we can't measure it online, we go out on the property and we're entering in all these variables on the actual uh, mobile device. And when we pull up the estimate, they all load and populate a predetermined price. So I'm gonna flip the screen around here and uh, show you what this actually looks like. But um, the whole idea here is creating a form that not only now tracks all your job variables for creating a price, but how to actually take comments that you make when you're walking around the house on a form and have them automatically insert into your estimate with no double entry in the estimate description. So check this out. This is pretty cool. We just cracked the code on this a few days ago, um, but, but pretty stoked about this. So um, let's check this out here with, with you. So what we're going to do is go into our test client and we're going to go in and go to the A for auto assist. If you don't have automations, your forms will be found uh, under forms right here, and then you can select the form by hitting fill out form. But uh, this is the the workflow on your laptop or Chromebook. If not in your mobile, you can go in and select this. So we're going to go to A for auto assist. Uh, we've segmented a series of forms for sales systems, employee systems, office KPIs, or key performance indicators, summer, winter, QC, and purchase um, orders and asset management. Uh, but right now we're going into our on site estimate form. So this traditionally pulled up either on a Chromebook or uh, in your mobile, traditionally in the mobile, if you're walking around an iPad or, or, or you know, Android device like a tablet. Um, all this information, if it's in here, automatically loads so you don't have to enter it in. I'm just going to put in an estimate or an email here so we can fill this out. What we're doing is we can't measure it online. We're going to go in and put the turf square footage, linear length of landscape bed if that's applicable. Let's say 700 square, 700 linear feet. Uh, landscape bed square footage, let's call it 1,000 square feet. Number of large shrubs, let's say we have 12 large shrubs, we have 13 medium. If you have any comments or questions, drop them below, I'm happy to answer them live or recorded. I can't see the comment screen right now because I'm working at home in my home office without a dual monitor, uh, but I will look at it before we turn this off if you're sticking with me here. I'm gonna say there's three small shrubs, uh, number of 10 foot sections of hedgerows with a ladder, let's say there is five, so 50 linear length. Um, and number of 10 foot sections with no hedgerow. Let's say there's three of those. Uh, this is where it's pretty cool. I typed this in when I tested it out, but shrub pruning property specifics added to estimate description. I typed in does not include hedgerow on back um, lot line. And you could say per request. So this is going to be inserted right in the actual estimate itself in the description for this specific property only. Uh, snow removal, let's go in and say it's a 500 square foot driveway and it includes the turnaround near the garage. These are property specific uh, details that can be inserted in your estimate description. We're going to scroll down and hit submit. Now these are saved on the actual company record. Under details, when I refresh, if I scroll down, you can see them in here. So what we're going to do is close this out go in and add an estimate. If you are a member of Service Autopilot and you're going to SA6 in Plano, Texas, uh, myself and Chris Volpe about to be announced, uh, a, a, basically a session you don't want to miss is we're going live and talking about what a fully set up Service Autopilot looks like. And we're going to go out and break out all the things I've learned over the last six or seven years, years using Service Autopilot, what a fully set up system looks like and how to utilize that. Um, next thing we're gonna go is hit templates. I'm gonna go in and select my 2019 lawn care lead template. So in my opinion, uh, you're gonna want two separate templates, one for leads, one for clients. They're identical except the email and the estimate document have different marketing copy based on where they're in that customer life cycle. So if they're a client and they've done work with you, it's a different conversation versus a lead that has not done work with you. So uh, lawn mowing example here, I'm gonna click on this just to show you. We're gonna hit quote. On-site estimate, uh, 
On-site price for production of mowing, edging, and blowing is thirty dollars, 0.4 man hours, and a cost of fourteen dollars and seventy-six cents before we make a profit. These are postal codes or zones. Same thing can be done in residential home cleaning as well. Uh, but if this is the postal code we're going to, we're going to type the number one because we're making one trip once a week there, and that's going to charge an additional eight dollars and nine cents for mobilization. So we're covering our on-site plus mobilization time. So all the consumer sees is lawn mowing for $38.09. We know on-site and mobilization is 0.56 man hours and a break even at $20.67. I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, same thing, anytime we have a custom a square footage here for like fertilization, it automatically loads in with property specific pricing. So it's $50 per application and the grub control has a higher material cost, so it's 80. I'm gonna leave that where it is because that's really not applicable to our example. Um, residential spring cleanup. If you're using subcontractors, this is kind of a cool thing as I get to the estimate description. We've got our on-site price of 150, so $50 per man hour, budgeted three hours here. I've got something automatically defaulted in as a disposal fee, so if something you need to charge, when you start delegating your estimates, your estimators will start sharpening the pencil to get those jobs. This is one way to ensure disposal fee or anything else that needs to be included is included or to hold yourself accountable. Same thing in here, I'm gonna go in and Add the number one for drive time. Same postal at code is zone. Uh, we make less jobs in one area, or less jobs are completed uh, because we do less spring cleanups in one day than we do lawn mowing. So it's $115 mobilization. So all the consumer sees a spring cleanup for $295. We've got 4.92 hours with mobilization, drive time, and dump time with dump fees. What we traditionally do is our subcontractor, I'm going to quote that so you can see that our subcontractor gave us their prices per square foot, the same $150 cleanup they're charging us 100. I'm gonna go into the postal code and give him the drive time. We did not want him to go out of business. Uh, he doesn't charge a disposal fee. So we've got spring cleanup that we're charging the client for 295. We're gonna leave this in draft, but this is our intern audit trail. So Christine and Tammy in my office would know that if the subcontractor ever, payment ever comes into question, we know they're paying them 215. Shrub pruning, this is where we got into the estimate description for property specific. All the types of shrubs we loaded in off the on-site estimate form loads here, and we calculated a specific property price based on the numerical variables coming in. So you fill it on the estimate form on the mobile. When you pull up the estimate, it loads the price. So we've got with disposal, um, and we're gonna add in the drive time for that same postal code, We've got that in there at $413.75, 0.35 man hours and a break even before we make a profit of $263.07. Snow plowing, I hit that to quote for shrubs and for snow plowing. Uh, in this example, we've got it for $250 uh, for the season. Scroll down, hit save. Now, once we have this, this is where all the property specific estimate descriptions come in. So what we're gonna do is go in and hit email. A pre-templated estimate email loads. This is what ours looks like. Uh, logo, obviously. Please sign the service renewal agreement um, for this. On the lead, it'll be a little bit different. We've got a quote link. We've got two clickable buttons. If they're on their mobile, they can call or text our office immediately from the phone. We included something called our lead letter. These are the five or six reasons why we're different. And we included customer testimonials. Whole idea is have this template loaded in, set it and forget it and hit send. As I pull this up, I'm going to uh, drop this back down, zoom it back out, and I'm going to log into my email real quick and pull this up. If you have any comments or questions, want to say what's up to Matt Hill here and a couple other guys watching. Um, And I'm gonna pull up my email here and I'll pull this up in a sec, just in case there's anything in my email um, that's private from a client or customer. All right, I'm gonna pull this back up. And with any luck, there we go. And we're gonna hop into my email. This is the email here without expanding it. Everything else is in there. We're gonna click my proposal. And here is the actual estimate. So we've got step one, select the services you want. Step two, accept and sign on the bottom. So we've got the lawn mowing for $38.09. Um, in New York and other places in the world, 
We really want to highlight service details and service terms and really spell that out. We have a clickable video inside that plays actually live inside the Callahan's lawn care. What I really recommend, if you're comfortable in front of the camera, even if you're not, you should do this. Include what's included, what's not included. Include uh, any sales or price objections. Overcome those through education. So this is our walking salesperson 24-7. So I've got the price for lawn mowing for on-site and off-site mobilization. The customer only sees 38 bucks, but it covers both. As we scroll down, we got the residential spring cleanup. We were charging $295, and I believe the subcontract is around $215. The consumer does not see any of the breakdown for mobilization, disposal, or on-site. All they know is it's two ninety-five. dollars Shrub pruning, same exact thing. Here is the best part and what we're talking about. Special job notes. Does not include hedgerow on back lot line west side per request. This is directly off our on-site estimate form, which in my opinion is a game changer. It takes... An extra step out of the equation, it allows you to walk through with your mobile phone, enter in all the job data and any special notes particular. Spring or uh, snow plowing, residential unlimited, 250. We've got all the information here. And property specific details. Includes turnaround near garage. So this is what we're talking about. This can be done and accomplished um, by going into your document and editor. And I'll talk about how you actually do this for anybody who's watching here. What's up, Justin? Um, basically, so what we're going to do is go into the Service Autopilot document editor and uh, grab the merge tags and insert them into the estimate details. So I'm going to show you real quick as I flip back and show you how this is done. So when we go into Service Autopilot, we want to go in and go under the gear icon. We want to go into Documents. Doesn't matter what document you pull up. I'm going to pull one up that we, it's an automated email we used to send out that you're not in our plowing area. Like I said, it really doesn't matter. We're just looking to grab these custom fields and merge them into the document. So as we go in here, I'm going to add a couple of spaces here up the top just so you can see it. And as we hover back into this, we're able to grab merge tags. And if I control off or command F, depending on your Mac or PC, I labeled mine B space hyphen B. So snow plowing details. If I click on that and grab this little line right here that I've highlighted and copy it, or in this case, cut it out, I would go into the service details under the gear icon services and I'm just going to add a service so you can see where this is. Under estimates, under that tab, if we pasted this in, we would say um, property details um, or whatever you want. Then you can go in and paste that in. And where that custom field is actually pulls in those specific custom field notes from the on-site estimate form. Where this was a big, huge breakthrough for us is the document editor um, in estimates on the service level does not have the ability to actually insert custom fields. But if you work the system and you go to the new document editor and copy and paste that in and scroll to the bottom and hit save, it will recognize that custom field and merge it in. The one place it will not, and this is a um, I don't want to say a downfall, but this is something I say I believe is still working on is um, it will not do it for job notes. So if you're on a client here, and I'll show you what this looks like, is if you're on a job and you have it set up. So we had waiting list for spring cleanup or fall cleanup here in this job. When you scroll up to job notes and you add a note and you paste that in, that custom field in that area will not be recognized and will not merge in, but it will merge in on um, the estimate description. And if you're doing a work order, not a job, custom fields can be merged in. I do believe in that instance that should work. I haven't tested it, but um, theory should be that that should play through and come come through. So uh, any comments or questions, let me know. I want to thank anybody who's watching. i um, got a couple comments and questions here, so I'm going to grab these while we're live. 
Um, actually, it's just what's up from Justin. So um, that's how we take it. We take custom fields, we put them on the on-site estimate form, and then we can merge those custom fields for those custom estimate documents live on the um, estimate description itself. So that is a great way to buy back time and systematize your estimating on site. Ideally, we like to go to Maps Pro, measure the satellite, grab the custom fields, save them that are highlighted and uh, color them out, and then drive them into the estimate. So whether you're pulling from an on-site estimate form or you're pulling from an, uh, basically Maps Pro or Google Earth, we're driving in for a production rate based estimating. And there is no shame in it. And trust me, I started out this way myself. If you don't know your production rates, break it down to either the man minute or the man hour. Man minute's gonna give you more clarity and more ability to be um, competitive. But we're gonna base it down and say, I think it's going to take X amount of hours or minutes based on one person. Plug that into the on site estimate form. And then when we pull up the template, it loads price, budgeted time cost before profit. We created a standardized process to track the start and stop times, hopefully with the mobile. And then six to 12 months later, we can run those reports and get property specific production rates based on your crew, your guys and girls, and um, the equipment you're using. So not only does this not work or does it work in the lawn care industry, but it also works in home cleaning, pest control, pool services, or any other service that we've seen. So um, this was a lawn care example, but this is extremely applicable to the home cleaning vertical as well, where we built out um, basically a fillable lead sheet where we take the on-site or the over the phone intake, we enter all the data points, we create a estimate of the phone, or if we're doing an on-site estimate, we go in and say, how many man hours is it gonna take for a top to bottom clean, a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly clean? And we can add property specific notes on that on-site form and all the notes would travel into the actual estimate. So if you have certain things you're including or not including the estimate, fill it out in an on-site estimate form and let those notes travel. In. So appreciate uh, everybody hanging out with me tonight. Um, in addition, Service Autopilot SA6, myself, Chris Volpe, what a fully service, uh, fully set up Service Autopilot system looks like. We are going to be hitting it hard um, in Plano, Texas this year. Otherwise, if you are... Um, I'm going to be out and about the U.S. I am going to be in Buffalo, New York, the end of September uh, with ASCA uh, and Snow Magazine doing a live talk uh, in Buffalo, New York. And then we're going out to Philly in Boston in the beginning of October. Uh, live events in Philly and Boston. If you want to come out and hang out with myself and a couple other uh, top industry consultants, then we're rolling into GIE. Uh, I'll be there at the Service Autopilot booth live at GIE. Then we're rolling in SA6. Then we're going out to Orlando, Florida, the beginning or right near the end of February. And then we'll be rolling over to Quality Driven Software live events um, for the last two days of that event. And possibly um, be announcing the next day or two here, um, the beginning of September, Garrett Matthews and I are going to be out uh, doing live uh, two-day event in upstate New York um, by the sounds of it, or in Louisiana, Shreveport. Uh, how to go out and set uh, production rate based estimating for holiday lights, how to set up holiday lights for profits and how to estimate them and set up packages and different things in SA for your holiday light system. So look forward to uh, seeing you guys on one of the live events. And if you have any comments or questions watching the recorded version of this or live, let me know. Um, but I wanted to bring a little more content to uh, the SA community and anybody else who is going out and using any other CRM for that matter. Uh, this is how you can set that up if they have the same functionality. So, Hope all's well and uh, look forward to any of the questions on the recorded version.